Okay, folks, so we're continuing on with our construction. We just looked at how to construct the graph of the tangent function, and now we'll do the graph of the secant function. So the graph of the secant function inputs real numbers from what? Well, to see that, we ought to look at our definition of the secant of the angle theta. That's equal to the ratio of r over x. And so similar to what we had with the tangent function, on the unit circle, there are some angles such as the angle 0 degrees or the angle 180 degrees, excuse me, <clears throat> there are some angles such as 90 degrees or 270 degrees or that's the same as pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 where if you go look at the x coordinate for those locations on the unit circle and of course they, you could repeat you know infinitely many times around there but on those locations of the unit circle we see that the x coordinate is zero and so that means that the secant will not be defined so similar to what we did with the tangent we will say that the domain of the secant function is a set of all numbers x such that x could be any real number except that x cannot equal an odd multiple of pi over 2 so remember in the last video we said to make an odd number we take 2n, we double a number, so doubling it makes it even, and then adding 1 to it forces that even number to then be odd, times pi over 2. So this gives me the odd multiple of pi over 2. And that was for what? That was for n, an integer. And hopefully we can see all that. <clears throat> And that outputs the ratio. So what was the uh, way of thinking about constructing this if we think about it in terms of reference triangles, which works everywhere except for at our uh, uh, corn, uh, the 90 degrees, 180 degrees. If we think of this as right triangles, we would have the ratio of the hypotenuse side over the uh, adjacent side for a corresponding right triangle. So again, another way to say that is if we gave an angle like this, there's the angle theta. <clears throat> and if we constructed a reference triangle here, we would have, if we want the secant of theta, we would take the hypotenuse, which is the uh, r coordinate, or another way to say it on the unit circle, that would be 1, over the adjacent side, which is the x coordinate. And that corresponded to a measure, uh, an angle measured uh, by x when I'm writing it this way. So again, this is a confusing fact of life, folks, that when I go to draw things on the unit circle, I typically label the angle as theta, and I identify the x, y order pairs. This x, though, in my statement for the secant of x, this x is not the angle theta, or this x is not the uh, adjacent side, but rather we're thinking about it as the angle that we're applying this to, and that can cause some confusion. I mentioned that warning here. Hopefully now we're starting to get a little more comfortable with it as this is our fourth trig graph. So again, stating the, the domain of the secant function one more time, that was the set of values x such that x could be any real number except what? And again, sometimes I can't remember the domain of the secant function, and so what I do is I go look at its ratio, and uh, it, let me keep that in terms of theta for just a moment. It's the ratio on the unit circle of 1 over the x coordinate and so I can't have the x coordinate be 0 and where on the uh, where on the unit circle is the x coordinate 0 at the odd multiples of pi over 2 so we say that x cannot be there's an odd number 2n plus 1 is an odd number times pi over 2 for n an integer and I'm sorry that it takes so long to write out that domain but that's just how it goes for some of these trig functions now let's put a pin in determining what the range of the secant function is. We'll see that as we construct the graph. So let's save that for just a moment. But the secant function is what we say is not continuous on the entire real line. That is, when I go to draw the graph of the continuous or the, uh, the secant function, I sometimes have to pick up my pencil to continue sketching it. More specifically, just like we saw with tangent, the secant of x has vertical asymptotes everywhere it's undefined. So Let's go down and start constructing the graph of the secant function. And this first part will be a little bit similar to what we did with tangent, where I think it's really helpful with the trig functions that have asymptotes to sketch the asymptotes first. And we just said that the secant function is defined everywhere except for the odd multiples of pi over 2. So there's 1 pi over 2. There's 2 pi over 2, but that's just pi, and that's not an odd multiple of pi over 2. And then 3 pi over 2. So there's where we'll have an asymptote, 
here we have five pi over two, here we have minus pi over two. So at all of these green tick, or at all of these uh, tick marks that I've just drawn, we're going to have vertical asymptotes. Okay. So let's go ahead and sketch those vertical asymptotes here. And I'm asking you to sketch your vertical asymptotes with a dashed line. And then I'm also asking you to label, uh, label a few of these. So notice that this was at x is equal to pi over 2. This is at x is equal to 3 pi over 2. Sometimes, folks, I see students not label their asymptotes, and then they end up sketching the graph incorrectly because they're not sure where they've just put that asymptote. So make sure you actually label those asymptotes. OK, so let's go ahead and plot a few points on my secant function just using my old-fashioned point plot method. So we'd have that the secant of, say, 0 is if you go on the unit circle to the angle zero degrees, which is right here, and you grab that ordered pair, that's the ordered pair one comma zero. And when we want the secant of zero radians, it's the ratio of the uh, one over the x coordinate right here. So one over this one right here. And so what is the secant of zero? It's the number one. So I go at zero on my x-axis. Remember, x here is playing the role of theta, whereas over here we're using the x-coordinate to help us evaluate the, se the secant function. I, I give it to you if you find that confusing, but we'll just keep rolling with it. Okay. So when we plug in 0 into this function, it ought to spit out a 1. So if I plug in 0 into this function, it's going to output the value 1, which I've labeled right there for you. Okay. Likewise, if we were to do the secant of uh, pi over 6, we're going to go to, on our unit circle, we'll go to the angle pi over 6, okay, which is uh, out a lot, up a little. We could label those ordered pairs if we wanted to. Out a lot, up a little. So it'd be the square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half for that ordered pair at pi over 6. And for the secant, I want 1 over the x coordinate. So that's 1 over the square root of 3 over 2, which I could clean up as 2 over the square root of 3. I'm actually fine with that, but a lot of people will ask you to rationalize this, so you'd rationalize it as 2 square root of 3 over 3. Giving a decimal approximation so we can see sort of where to place that on our graph. If I were to compute that, let's see what we get. So computing that, I get approximately a decimal 1.15 uh, is approximately the value of 2 squared of 3 over 3. And so if I go to pi over 6 and I go up just a little bit past 1, there's another point on the graph of this function. And I can continue. I'm just going to go ahead and state the values. If we do secant of pi over 4, if we do that, we will get the square root of 2. Um, by the way, uh, oftentimes you might write it first as 1 over the square root of 2, and then you uh, uh, rationalize. Excuse me, you would have written it as 2 over the square root of 2, and then when you rationalize it, you just get the square root of 2. So if I go to pi over 4, I would go up to the square root of 2, which is about right there. And then if we were to do uh, the secant of, say, pi over 3, uh, the secant of pi over 3, if you were to compute that, would come out to be 2. So if we go to pi over 3, we'd go up to 2. And you can see I'm starting to construct. Let me scoot that over just slightly. Um, I'm starting to construct the graph of this secant function. There we go, secant of 2. So here is the graph of the secant function. And you could plot other values to see what's going on. So here we have, uh, if we were to plug in pi, the secant of pi is 1 over the x coordinate at the angle pi, which is negative 1. So we get negative 1 for this. Again, I got there by looking at the unit circle and going to the angle pi and grabbing the ordered pair minus 1, 0. And so this minus 1 is what I did, 1 over minus 1. And so we get that the secant of pi is minus 1. So let's see here, here's minus 1 on my graph. So I don't label those for you, but but you can um, infer what they are. And so there's the order pair pi comma minus 1. And then you could graph several other order pairs on here if you wanted to. And you would find that this is the generic shape. Now we've sketched one period of our, um, uh, we've sketched one period of our uh, secant function. And you could continue. If we plug in 2 pi, it would also spit out a 1. So that's the order pair 2 pi comma 1 there. And we repeat the shape of this graph. You see that we have sort of these horseshoe shapes. I don't know a good name for that, folks. They're not truly parabolas, so it would be kind of misleading uh, to call them parabolas. This sort of horseshoe sort of shape that looks, that reminds me of parabolas, except that they are stuck inside of these 
asymptotic lines here, so they're not truly parabolas. So there I've done a quick rough sketch of the secant of x. And what I want to point out here is a couple of things. Okay, okay. Uh, what I want to point out here is a couple of things. Um, the secant of x is an even function, meaning that if you were to evaluate f of negative x, if you plug in the opposite of x, you'll just get out the same thing as when you plugged in x. Okay. Uh, so another way to say that is that opposite domain values have the same range values. That's a hallmark of being an even function. So for example, the secant of pi over 6, which we said was 2 squared of 3 over 3, if we were to then evaluate the secant of minus pi over 6, I'm plugging in the opposite sign, I'm going to get out the same value here. So we see that reflected in this graph. I plugged in pi over 6 and I got out this y value. If I plug in minus pi over 6, I get out the same y value. And that has to do with this secant function being an even function. By the way, notice that if you were to reflect the graph of this function about the y-axis, one side would fall mirror image on top of the other. So the secant function is said to be 2 pi periodic, meaning uh, if we were to find f of x, let's, let's not write it in terms of f, if we were to find the secant of x, that's the same thing as evaluating the secant of x plus 2 pi. So choosing a domain value that's exactly 2 pi units away from the previous domain value will output the exact same thing. And for instance, we see that here. Here, if I plugged in pi over 6, we got out this order pair. If I plug in 13 pi over 6, which is exactly 2 pi away from it, I would get out the exact same range value. And that's a hallmark of this being a periodic function. So a consequence of this is that the graph of the secant of x repeats itself every 2 pi units. Okay, folks, at this point, what I want you to do is I want you to roughly sketch the four graphs that we've learned. Uh, I apologize for the typo on that. That should look a little bit nicer. But I want you to go ahead and sketch f of x equals the sine of x. Uh, I want you to go ahead and sketch g of x equals the cosine of x. I want you to sketch h of x equals the tangent of x. And uh, k of x equals the secant of x. I want you to sketch all four of these down here roughly. I'm not looking for perfection with these sketches. I am looking that you label your axes. I'm looking that you label your graph. I want you to label several of the zeros, although you don't need to label all of them if the graph has zeros. And I want you to sketch, uh, sketch any asymptotes and label them. Okay, so I'm not looking for perfection with these graphs. We're looking for these rough sketches here. So that's why I'm using the phrase roughly. We're going to learn how to be more careful in some other uh, examples down the road. It is important that you basically repeat sketching these four graphs until you can sketch each of them from memory. Finally, folks, I realize there's one thing I forgot to do in this video, and that is we skipped over the range of the secant function. Remember how we talked about finding the domain and range of a function? For finding the range, we think about if you could shine a flashlight on the graph of this function on either side of it. Or another way to say that is if you were to collapse this entire function down onto the y-axis, you can see the range of it. So the range of this function would go from uh, would go from minus infinity to minus 1. That's this part here. So all of these uh, hoops that are below the x-axis, if you were to collapse them down onto the y-axis here, all of the points that I've just shaded along the y-axis would be included. So our range will go from minus infinity to minus 1, unioned with, and then when I collapse this graph, all, uh, also when I collapse this graph onto the y-axis, all of the uh, little horseshoe shapes that are above the x-axis, they would all get collapsed along this part here that I've just shaded, and so it would go from 1 to infinity. There's another way to think about that, and that is if you look at the sine of x, if you think of that as being the hypotenuse uh, over the adjacent side, on a right triangle, the hypotenuse is always the longest side of a right triangle, so you've got in your numerator an expression that's always larger, or with the exception of a pi and a zero, uh, the same as, but the numerator is generally always larger than the adjacent side, never smaller, and so that's why this uh, ratio for the secant, that should be secant, folks, this ratio for the secant of x always comes out in the absolute value sense to be 1 or larger. Okay. All right, folks, that was a, a rough um, 
intro to being able to roughly sketch the graphs of these two functions, please finish this part out where you're sketching the four graphs because I need you to be able to do these sketches from memory without very much prodding at all. So uh, give it your best shot. I will include a solution and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.